to. Sorry, I have. <laughs> that fucking dog better not bark, dude. No. My wife left, and she got to control the dogs while I do this because I'm not in my office. <laughs> Sorry. Um, thing, okay. man. I'll just restart. Ready? What's up, guys? This is Keith Kelfis with the Untrapped Podcast, and we're doing a special transmission today also on video. So not only can you catch this on where any podcast is available, but also here on video, on YouTube, on Facebook, everywhere. And we have a special guest. We have Brandon Vaughn from Conquer. And Brandon's here. What's up, Brandon? What's up, Keith? Good to be here, man. Yeah, so you see his face right there. Um, Brandon is a very special person. And, and to me, because here's a guy who owned a window cleaning, soft washing, pressure washing business. And he brought it from just a little tiny business back in the day and blew it up to a half a million dollars a month, over 60 employees. And he got to the point where he was in, in implementing all these systems into his business. And I've learned a ton from Brandon. He's been the keynote speaker at tons of industry events and also has the Conquer program where he's helping literally change and improve the lives and businesses of many, many small business owners and as a family unit as well. Like I went to the Conquer uh, Summit that you guys had last year yeah. and it was just phenomenal, the level of training. But today we're going to talk about something that's in the air right now and everywhere mm. and talk about how this COVID-19 coronavirus is impacting you, how it's impacting your business and what can we do about it. There's different mindsets and how we respond right now because between stimulus and you know what happens there, there's a small gap and that's our ability to respond to anything how are we going to handle this and what are some of the best things that we can do what's up brandon what's up man yeah this is it's uh definitely unprecedented times right i mean i think i think it's safe to say that most service business owners have not weathered something like this in their lifetime um it's new it's different it presents new challenges, but the response is going to be the same, whether it is, you know, uh, something happened in the economy versus this bug that's going around. Uh, the response really ends up being kind of the same, the same thing as far as best practices on how to weather the storm, how to uh, handle it. And I think that at the beginning, there's a lot of people that were saying, is this real? Is it really anything? Is it even going to be? Is it, is it just overhyped media stuff? And I think it's starting to kind of turn a little bit more into people understanding, okay, this is really serious. And, and I think that uh, the people who have decided to be the buffalo and run towards the problems rather than run away from them, I think they're a little bit more well-equipped to deal with it. And, but I think that that's kind of all shifting right now to where people are understanding, okay, we, we, we got to have a game plan. So that's why I wanted to get together with you and, and um, you know, help arm people with a good game plan and talk about it and just you know, de be transparent about it. Yeah. And if there's one person that knows, and I mean, it's you, the conversations that I've had with you and the storms you've had to weather and the things or anxieties that you've been through in your business have really given you perspective perspective is a huge thing. I know that I went through 2008 and I mean, there was, right. it was, it was tough and it's interesting to see some people that haven't been through that, that are a little bit younger versus the, the people that been through 2008. And I'll tell you one thing, we came out of 2008 swinging, but there are some people who didn't mm -hmm. come out so well because they got very discouraged and they gave up and they lost all momentum. So uh, what, are, what are some things, what's going on in your head right now? I think well. I think there's an interesting thing that's happening right now in service businesses. There's, there's some people that are like, um, you know, they're, they're looking at something where it's like, they're dealing with issues, they're dealing with problems and they're crushing it still. Right. So they're, they're actually going out there, they're pivoting, they're offering different, you know, cleaning and sanitizing services. They're reaching out in PR, they're on news media stations. Uh, they're, they're chasing down the problem head on. And I think for those people, their business is actually booming right now. I've, I've talked to some home service business owners where they're booked out for like weeks, months in advance right now. One guy has you know $200,000 worth of book, uh, work that's lined up for like the next month and a half. Um, but then you also have people that are really struggling 
And I think it kind of varies in different trades. You know, some people like the, the cleaning industry with their trades, you kind of have a unique advantage to be able to take advantage of this and to, um, you know, pivot a little bit and really be a leader in your, in your community. So I think what's, what's happening to people is that they're letting the fear and anxiety of what could happen paralyze them from taking action right now. And the thing that I always like to talk about is there's three different stages. There's like depression, contentment, and anxiety. So, you know, depression is living in the past. Something that's happened before in the past, you're, you know, that's where depression really comes from. Anxiety is the opposite. It's living in the future. It's being so freaked out and so stressed out about these things that could happen that you get paralyzed and the reality is, is that a lot of those things, your deepest fears, your deepest anxieties, they may never come to fruition. In fact, how many times have we been so anxious and so freaked out because we have nothing on the schedule for tomorrow? And we're like, oh my gosh, there's like, well, what am I going to do? You just have so much anxiety and your heart's, you know, racing and your pulse is pounding and you're freaking out and all of your employees are all stressed out. And then later on that afternoon, you get a call for a job that like books you out for two months. And then you're like, oh, sweet, everything's, everything's good. But that time period where you're so anxious, you're worried about things that may or may not even happen. Whereas that contentment, that happiness is just kind of being in the now, taking things one day at a time and just being present with your team, present with your, uh, your, your family, present with life and the fact that we're here and we can breathe in and we can enjoy it. And um, I, I think that that mindset is such a big critical component as a business leader as to whether your business is going to struggle or whether it's going to thrive. You said as a business leader, which is so yes. important to be that and then demonstrate that and be the role model to the people on your team, right. to people in your family and your friends that you have a sense of calm about you no matter what. Because if you add to the chaos or the hysteria, then you're just adding to the problem. So that's a good point. And one thing I want to add to what you're saying is for some of you guys out there that know I used to be a huge conspiracy guy back in, in 08. Uh, I was on the internet too much and I went down a rabbit hole. Ooh, and ooh this, is a good, this is a good point. I spent a few years thinking the worst possible scenarios that I don't want to say here. And you know what? I'm mad because that stuff didn't even happen. And I spent so much time worrying about it. And I, and I realized, and because I make YouTube videos, anybody can make a really catchy thumbnail and a catchy headline and they can do things to drive traffic. And it's called, um, uh, you know, like marketing hell is that where they're going to go. There's the joke about that because if you, if you capitalize off of chaos, but so ha right. have perspective, right? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a good point. I think, um, uh, the, the one thing that you mentioned with regards to, um, you know, being surrounded by it, you know, and kind of being in that, that world, um, a big way for just kind of managing stress and making sure that you're not totally freaking out is to take a break from it. Take a break from the social media, take a break from watching the news and checking these things out. Like if you're constantly Googling like coronavirus update right now, um, you're just going to get sucked into it and you're just going to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And as a leader, your, your team's counting on you, your family's counting on you. Um, you. You can't just do that. You have to be present for them. Uh, one thing that I had personally experienced in my business before was whenever me as the CEO, I walk into my company and people sense that I'm anxious and I'm talking about, you know, I'm stressed out about work. I'm stressed about this vehicle that's down. I'm stressed out about, you know, the, this next job that might be canceling. It affects everybody in the company everyone gets affected by it. And then suddenly like everyone else is, you know, bickering with each other and they're stressed out and they're freaking out. And then, you know, the performance of the entire team goes down. So I actually had to put on like this face of coming into my company and being like, what's up guys. High five. We're going to crush it today. We're going to have an amazing day. You guys are amazing. You know, we, we absolutely got this. Like you have to have that confidence level. And it's almost kind of like a, for me, it was like a fake it till you make it. I had to like fake that I was so confident and I had to be that persona until finally it would start manifesting itself in my company. And then once it manifested in my company that things were under control, then it gave me actually the confidence that I was pretending I had. <laughs> and and it, it makes a big impact on how you, and how you deliver that message to your team and your family. And wouldn't you say, uh, and I want to put you on the spot right here too, because I, I, the, the question is, wouldn't you say that learning how to, 
uh, respond and be responsible for the energy that you bring into an environment around other people is so important that contributed to all the success that you've created and where you're at today. But also, can you tell the story along with that of you told me this story of how you had uh, you, you had the word control ripped up on a piece of paper? Yeah. Can, can you tell that? Yeah. So it was, uh, you know, in order to be able to grow a business, you have to put a lot of trust and confidence in other people. Um, you have to be optimistic, especially if you're going to grow fast. If, if you are always worrying about what could go wrong and how much, you know, could, could crumble and fall apart. And well, what if that new employee screws me? And what if this person takes advantage of me? You're never going to be able to experience growth in your business, period. You have to let go of control. And I was at this point in time to where, um, you know, I was, I was really in a bad place with my business. Uh, we were experienced really rapid growth and then really almost kind of imploded. Half of my employees quit on me within 30 days. And I was really freaking out. I became very bitter, I became bitter towards other team members, other employees, um, became like, well, I got to do it all myself kind of a person. And it wasn't until I sat down with my business coach, she actually made me write down the word control on a piece of paper. And she like slid it across her desk and I like picked it up. It's like, okay, got this. She like, now I want you to tear it into a million tiny pieces, as tiny pieces as you possibly can. And she just stood there quiet at her desk while I did this. And I just tore it into all these pieces. And I actually started crying. I actually got emotional because I was tearing this up and it was a silly, stupid thing. It was a piece of paper that had the word control on it, but it just symbolized a kind of a turning point for me when you, you know, you realize that you have to depend upon other people, you have to depend upon your team and you just have to lead with optimism. And, um, I think that's a challenge, especially in the age of social media and keyboard warriors and how everyone wants to give their opinion. And if someone's really struggling, they, in order to feel better about themselves, post all their negativity online and tear everyone else down because it makes themselves feel better. And we're surrounded by that everywhere that we look. So, I mean, as a business leader, what are you going to do? Are you going to buy into it? Are you going to, you know, rise above it and lift people up? Or are you going to, you know, tear down and be a fear monger? And I think that that's kind of a choice that you have and I have, and we all have right now um, amidst a crisis like this. And when people look back on it, the leaders are the ones who are going to thrive after it. They just are. What would you say some of the most key important behaviors and routines to maintain so you don't end up uh, falling into a lull or into a, sl a slump right now. And I know things are, are going to be harder. We have to hustle that much harder and be, and, and all the skills that we've been gathering these last few years are all going to come into play right now. So right. what are some of those behaviors and things that, that you foresee are the most uh, important right now? I think that the most important thing is to be proactive don't be reactive at this time. Don't say, oh, well, we'll just, we'll just wait and see if, if, if this is going to happen. We have to wait and see until this all shakes out before you, know, you make decisions to keep marketing, to keep reaching out to your customers, uh, to keep putting out there. Because if you, if you are like, you know, I'm just going to wait to market until I kind of see how things shake out, um, you're going to find yourself in a really bad place. You have to make sure that you're putting the gas pedal down because right now there are people who may not want to use your services who are you like already on your book of schedule or your existing customers, but there may be a whole new area over here of opportunity that's available to you if you actually are proactive and go out and try to find it. And so I think that the, the people who tend to be thriving are the ones who have um, already created a video, you know, educating all their customers about the things that they're going to be doing. They've already created, you know, the content to be able to educate, um, you know, their local community. They're already reaching out to the news media. They're being proactive. They're not waiting to see how it affects their business. They're just moving forward as if they are going to thrive. And that's what's going to push them through. You just gave me a, a massive insight. So I was, I was concerned about that specific thing. And, and I, I don't mean to sound uh, cold, but the other companies that are shrinking in this time they're going to reduce their capacity to take care of clients. Yes. So, so moving forward and being fully proactive and on the hustle, on the hustle. Yeah. You have to, you have to keep, you have to keep putting the, the, the gas pedal down. Um, you know, and I, and I think this is, uh, it's a really important thing when service business owners are looking to, um, 
you know, if you put the same effort as if you're trying to grow your business and continue to grow your business, you may not actually grow leaps and bounds, but you may stay at the current level to where you're not having to lay off people, um, you know, have to make, you know, severe moves, but, you know, send out text blast to all your customers, send out email blast, voicemail bomb blast, like keep the pedal down. So we're starting next week. We're we're um, we're already getting booked out. The phone's ringing. I'm out doing quotes. And normally, I don't like to start until the first week of April, full blown. That's packed schedule because we're getting everything, all the ducks in a row. In Michigan, uh, where I'm from, it was literally freezing the other night. Then it's warm. Then it's freezing. Then it's snowing. It won't make up its mind. But it looks like we're starting a couple weeks early here. And so, so what about? Uh, uh, guys in different areas of the country that are in different industries. Cause a lot, a lot of guys here uh, that are listening to this podcast, they cut grass, they trim bushes, they install landscape projects. What do you think about versus these high ticket luxury projects versus all the general maintenance that's going to need to get done anyways? Well, I mean, again, I think that, that people are going to, they are going to start panicking. They are going to start looking at how can they cut expenses and they're going to start looking at things as like unnecessary expenses. And I think the, the reactive business owner is going to take a look at that and they're going to say, well, I'm just going to see how many people cancel. I'm going to see how many people, you know, decline services, which, you know, you shouldn't be thinking that way. You should be thinking, how can I get, you know, 10 X more customers than I currently have right now? Like how, how can I market to get even more customers coming into my business rather than just waiting to see what our, nut looks like right now and how much of that's going to kind of go away. <laughs> you know what? You just reminded me of Tony Robbins and personal power Two back in the day. I was listening to that while I was out cutting grass. He had this story where he was in a, a race car uh, getting coached. Uh, you know, this story. Yeah. Yeah. Tell the story. No, you tell it. You tell it, man. Go ahead. All right. I've been talking so, too much. <laughs> dude, this, I'm interviewing you. Um, but he said that whatever you focus on. So when I, he would randomly, uh, pull this lever and then would spin the car out of control. And at first, Tony Robbins would look at the wall and try to avoid the wall and they started going straight towards it. But the, the, uh, the race car driver coach conditioned him to look at where he wants to go. Very, very important right now. So we have all these distractions coming at us like being in a batting cage with all of them turned on and we have to focus on the target even harder now and really get clear about distractions. So daily routines, committing that you'll only look at the news twice a day instead of refreshing literally every 20 minutes. Right. Or like that. Once, once a week. I mean, dang, I mean, it's, you want to be informed, but uh, too much obsession over it is, is going to be too much. And then social media, social media can be a really big problem. Um, one thing I just want to encourage anyone here is that the, the industry as a whole has to raise every single one who's a service business owner right now that is in your industry they're a brother or a sister. Like you really have to view them as a family because everyone all over the country in our industries, they're, they're, they're struggling. They, you know, there's a lot of people that are struggling, not everyone, but there's a lot of people that are struggling. Let me ask you a question. What, what's going to fan the flames and what's going to douse the flames going online and posting, well, I just lost another $5,000 job. Well, I just lost another $400 job. Thanks a lot. COVID-19. Well, I just, you know, I just found out that one of my employees quit, just found out this, just found out that. Like we have a choice. We can post online and social media, all the negative impacts that uh, how this is affecting our business. What does it accomplish other than just like making us feel better that we've been able to complain to someone else and add more negativity. What it can do is it can cause a lot of other of our fellow business service business owners of these companies to be even more stressed out, even more panic, even if they're not currently experiencing that they're saying, well, inevitably this is going to happen to me. Inevitably I'm going to suffer this exact same fate and start freaking out. Whereas we have a choice to comment our wins. What we've, what we're finding out is working, um, you know, talking about, talking about things specifically. So, you know, what we put in words and what we put back out there into the world, as far as positive versus negative, uh, will not just impact ourselves, but it'll impact everybody. And so, you know, one of the things that I was watching, um, have you seen this video in Italy where they're like singing out on all their balconies? Bro, bro, I just watched that this morning and it was, like it was beautiful? emotional, dude. That was beautiful, bro. And it was so inspiring. I mean, like, you know, you have these people that are going through one of their biggest national crises ever 
and everyone's all like locked up in their house. If you haven't seen a video, you have to go watch it. It's really heart move, heartwarming. It was moving to watch this, but they have all these people that are standing out in their balconies and they got their accordions and their drums and they're just singing. And there's like, everyone is trying to be together rather than in their isolation, freaked out, stressed out, anxious. Like you have a choice. You can get out of the balconies and you can sing and you can encourage and you can lift somebody up or you can be in isolation and you can post in social media in your dirty little corner and just talk about all the negative things that's going on right now and how it's impacting you in a negative way. Now, this doesn't mean you shouldn't have an outlet to be able to handle and talk to someone and have a support community on dealing with negative things. You don't have to just, it's not all just sunshine and rainbows, right? We still have the reality of the situation, but how you publicly project your energy into the world, you know, and in your comments uh, is going to make a massive impact to our industry and to the community. And I just, how awesome would it be if we could do that same thing like they're doing in Italy right now in our own industry with each other and, and reaching out and helping each other and, you know, providing each other with strategies and tactics and wins rather than just turning social media and just complain fest of all the terrible things that are going on. I mean, it's such a, it's such a, such a different way to look at it, but it's, it's a choice. That's true leadership. Yeah. Yes. You know, I, the, encouragement is it's a very high vibration and versus fear and discouragement and so i'm thinking about that even now more so instead of just in the household encouraging others encouraging people and your friends and family on social media we're going to get through this everything's going to be okay like a yes. coach and you coach dozens of business owners at all different levels what are some of the experiences that that you have that and you're going to have because you're coaching right now i mean um the conquer program are you getting the concerns expressed and how do you communicate with them what are some of the results that you're seeing a hundred percent yes we we've you know this is this is not immune uh to everybody everyone is experiencing you know fear and anxiety especially if they're on social media a lot <laughs> and interacting with you know the negative posts and things um, but the, the biggest thing that we're coaching people is we're, we're arming them with tools and practical steps. And the thing that makes me most proud about our community of Conquer members, which we have about 200 uh, plus Conquer members right now in our program, is that everyone is collaborating and sharing what posts they're doing that's getting really excellent, um, you know, response in their community. Um, you know, their interviews that they're doing with the, the news media. I think we have like, uh, you know, 14 or 15 of our Conquer members that have been actually interviewed by TV news stations and have TV broadcasts of their members on there. And it all started because people are sharing and collaborating wins with each other. Uh, they're sharing, um, you know, what social media posts they're doing that are, are garnering a whole bunch of new business. Um, they're sharing, you know, how they're impacting uh, or how they're communicating with their customers. Uh, one of our Conquer members created this insanely awesome video uh, about all the steps that he's doing um, to make sure that the customer as a homeowner is safe when they come on site and are, you know, performing services there. And he shared the B roll with all of our Conquer members so that they could all produce their own videos. So like there's, there's ways that you can share and collaborate and team up to be able to make, you know, the, the power of the group collaboration um, rather than just having to be by yourself and trying to figure out this all on your own like get part of a community if it's not conquer get part of you know a facebook group and find a positive one if there's a lot of negativity block those people like just cut them out and focus on the positive parts that's awesome that's awesome can you talk about uh an experience you went through in in your business before you you just sold it last year mm -hmm. to move on to this and um build this whole community but i mean with how many i remember you posted this picture on i think it was facebook and it, it was your team they flew a drone up and it was just like look like a small army that you had built <laughs> and your ability your, how you empowered so many people to um, take the reins and but what is something really hard that you went through in your business that you had to control your mindset and get through and you did get through um, I think <laughs> probably one of the, probably one of the toughest things was when I had, um, a former disgruntled employee, um, who ended up being just a total cancer to our company. Um, literally like, in fact, probably a half dozen other 
employees to almost a full-blown revolt inside of my business. And this was someone who I spent a tremendous amount of you know, time, energy, and effort um, building that person up, helping him. I even gave him personal loans um, and uh, you know, gave him access to personal or to, to work equipment to be able to do a thing. Just like really took care of him. In reality, I actually just ended up spoiling him. Um, it, it ended up getting into a really bad situation with him and uh, several other people on our team to where we just had to cut the cancer out. And I, I remember at one point in time, it ended up getting so bad to where, uh, I mean, I kind of wanted to just give up. I mean, really, it just was, it felt impossible, like an impossible situation to try to, you know, get back a hold of. But sometimes, you know, a healthy body, everyone realizes that it's a healthy body when you fight off the cancer and you fight the germs and you fight the, you know, you cut out the sickness everyone else realizes that that's actually a sign of the body being very healthy. So when I made that really tough decision to literally fire a half dozen plus employees and kind of cut out this big chunk of cancer that we had in our business, um, instantaneously the morale lifted up in our company. We had people coming to me sharing all these, you know, stories and horror stories of things that were going on behind the scenes after they were gone. And uh, it actually was the, an immediate 180 degree switch inside of our business of terrible cancerous uh, environment to positive thriving, like most profitable months ever, as soon as we made that big switch. And, um, you know, really it just kind of comes down to, uh, you know, are you prepared to make the necessary hard decisions? Cause it was tough. I mean, when we fired that many people all at once, I had to jump back into the field full time. My wife had to jump back into the field. She like helped me was like pressure washing some of our jobs. Um, she had to jump back in work full time again. I mean, it was, it was hard. It was a, it was a hard move, but uh, it made all the difference in the world and it instantaneously made our company more healthy. I bet you uh, there's a I don't saying think I've um, ever shared that story with anyone on any podcast before, by the way. Yeah. And there's more where <laughs> that came from. Maybe we'll say this for later. I'll ask you off a uh, script. <laughs> you told some, but Brandon has some stories that would be some of our nightmares and you've lived them out. And that's the reason why you're successful because you kept charging forward instead of crawling in a hole. And, um, I think it was the book Traction, was it? Basically, after you do cut the cancer out and you get rid of some of those employees, the other employees, so after the cancer is cut, the other employees will start coming out and revealing things that mm -hmm. were happening all along that you weren't even aware of and how they felt. And you'd be like, how come you didn't tell me this beforehand? Right, right, yeah. You know, there's an awesome quote that I love from uh, Walt Disney. And um, if you don't know much about Walt Disney's story, dude, he went through some stuff. like. His first business that he ever started up, it went bankrupt within like two months and then went bankrupted his company, th I think three or four times before he actually found a decent amount of success, had, had a company, you know, steal his intellectual property and poach like all of his employees. Um, I mean, you want to read a pretty inspiring story, but one of the things that uh, it was his favorite quotes that I, I love that he said, he says, you may not, he says, all my obstacles have strengthened me. You may not realize it when it happens, but a kick in the teeth may be the best thing in the world for you. <laughs> and it's, it's true. I mean, you know, iron, iron is, is actually uh, strengthened when you beat the crap out of it with a hammer and heat it up and plunge it into cold water and like basically torture it. You, you strengthen iron and you tension it and you create it even more hardened and more resilient and sharper. I mean, like you can sharpen it by, you know, this really brutal process of, of, you know, extreme heat to extreme cold and plunging it back and forth. It, like it creates this ultimate sharp weapon and you have kind of a choice. You can just, when you get that heat, you can just melt and you could just fade away into nothingness and just give up, or you could use it to your advantage and use it to sharpen yourself and harden yourself to be better, be a weapon. And that comes down to a choice whether it's one single choice or a choice that is literally moment by moment, a minute by minute choice um, to look at the wall when everything's out of control and crash into the wall or be diligent and hustle. And I really think about this a lot when times are really, really good. Do you do the things necessary because times are good that are going to benefit you and times are down? 
or are we lazy when times are good? If somebody asks us for a favor or it's, it's just kind of a spiritual thing. It's like a yin yang. It's like when people feel that fear of God on them, like you feel this feeling, it's this very, it's a specific calling. It's like, and I don't know if this is like religious brainwashing in my head, but I, I really believe it is God that I feel because I've had some religious brainwashing too, just to be clear. But I, I feel this feeling like, who are you in these times? Well, do, well that, that's what's going to happen in these times. So who are you? Are you a completely rounded, holistic person who doesn't forget where you came from? And like you said, with the iron sharpening iron, do you, do you make the choice to literally put on your battle gear and get out there and hustle and fight the good fight? Yeah, yeah, it's true. I mean, I, I think that um, there's if there's one thing that um, you know I, I've learned in in business over these past you know few years is you know we've we've had some really really hard times you know where I've been crying on the couch, full blown panic attack, crying in my uh, laundry room on the floor with my wife, hugging my wife because you know we we didn't know what was going to happen next. Um, we've had a lot of moments like that. And, you know, one of the, our mutual close friend, uh, Josh Latimer says, everyone sees the wine. No one sees the crushing of the grapes. Like it's sometimes I think that, you know, people feel like if everything is going, if, if, if they're scared and they are freaked out, that that's a sign that something's wrong in their business. When in reality, to get somewhere you've never been means doing things you've never done before. So the very act of growth and getting to a better place means to be uncomfortable and means to be a little bit fearful. Um, comfort breeds complacency. So the more comfortable we are in our business when everything's smooth and going along, like the more complacent we get with things so that when the hard times come, we don't even know how to function. So, it, you know, I, I think it's good to always make sure that you're a little bit uncomfortable in your business. It kind of smooths out those highs and those lows. I mean, when I sold a big, you know, $30,000 job, I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, get the champagne bottle, let's pop it open, this is amazing. And then when the job cancels, you know, I wouldn't go into like a spiraling depression. <laughs> I would kind of iron out some of those really, really high moments. And then I'd also smooth out the really, really low moments because I knew that, you know, in, in, in three to six months, I mean, it's going to be kind of back to business as usual. Will we be able to survive this? We'll be able to do what's you know required to, you know, iron out and smooth out this, this dip. It's, it's all in how we approach it and, and how willing we are to run head first at the problem rather than just wait for it to happen to us. Awesome. You know, one thing with people in uh, being anxious is uh, back to the basics. What are all the basics? Can you, can you lay out five, six things right now that uh, service business owners need to be doing right now and need to be doing every day in order to keep the ball moving forward and keep progressing? Yeah. I mean, I think that um, uh, in fact, one of the cool things that um, our conquer coaches did is last week they spent they probably volunteered a good 20 hours collectively of their time minimum uh, putting together this incredible uh, field guide to, you know, basically survive COVID-19 in your service business. And it's just this massive 20 page long document with FAQs and um, everything. And in fact, if, if you want, I can give you a links to share it with your listeners so that they could uh, download and check it out. Um, it's completely free resource just for the industry. We just want people to be able to, you know, thrive throughout all of this, but it really kind of comes down to, um, uh, yeah, I want that. I want that too. So I'll put the link below, give it to me after this and I'll put it below. Okay. And for <laughs> those of you listening to the podcast, if you can't find it in the show notes, it'll be on my YouTube channel. So, um, you know, the first thing is really identifying really clearly, your market positioning is there is there anything that you can do to provide services or to provide support to customers who need it the whole reason why we exist as entrepreneurs is because we're serving our customers that's it it's the whole reason why there's there's no other purpose for our existence than serving people that's why we're in the service business we're servants so the first thing we have to do is how can we serve our customers what are they freaked out about what are current issues and problems that they're that they're having currently and how can we serve them um, how can we allay their fears of having someone onto their property? How can we, like, you have to put yourself inside the mind of your customer 
to be able to figure out how best to serve them in the best way. Rather than being like so obsessed over, oh, me, 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 really the act of serving others is what's going to get you what you want. Zig Ziglar said, you could have everything you want in life if you help enough other people with what they want in life. So uh, that's a really big thing. How can you market yourself and position yourself to still provide service to your customers? And there's a lot of service businesses that are doing this very, very well. And it means pivoting and doing some things that they are not 100% comfortable doing because they're not a, an expert in this field or they, they don't know if it's going to work, but they're just trying to figure that out. Call some of your customers. Ask them, if there's a, is there anything that we can do? You know, I know that exterior services may not be a, a, an absolute thing that you might need right now, but is there something else that we can do to provide, you know, some kind of service to you? So it kind of starts with that. Um, the second thing you can do is every single day, um, you have to recharge yourself. You have to make sure that you're filling your own tank personally, spending time with your family, being in gratitude, uh, just being appreciative of what you have. Because it can be really easy as service business owners to just obsess about our business and think about how it's being impacted it. But you know, let's not forget for those of us who have kids and have family members and a spouse and a community of people that are looking to us, um, we have to make sure that we're also serving them. And, you know, sometimes that means stepping up as a leader. They say heavy wears the crown, right? Heavy is heavy is the, the crown. And uh, it's true. Being a leader requires kind of carrying some of that burden and it's it's hard. So the third thing I recommend doing is get a support group, get people who you can uh, you know, count on and trust rather than venting your public things out to the general public, like find a couple people that you can just kind of team up and just really help each other uh, work through some of those tough times. So you have to have some kind of a conduit, some kind of a lifeline um, for that part of it. And then also, you know, make sure that you're taking preventative uh, steps to preserve your own health. And uh, on a daily basis, you know, make sure that you're taking care of yourself. I think they said that one of the biggest risks right now for this whole thing is obesity and people who are not taking care of their health currently. So uh, an immediate thing you can do is just immediately start taking care of yourself better, drink tons of water, exercise, stretch, meditate, do whatever you need to do to, you know, to kind of clear your mind and make sure that you're um, in a good place. Uh, read the Bible, um, you know, practice, uh, uh, I mean, just be a more spiritual person, um, focus on, uh, focus on, you know, being connected and, uh, you know, with each other and that'll go a long way. It's, it's going to be a mind game, a hundred percent. It's going to be a mind game and mindset is what's going to rule the day. So you have to focus on, on practical steps that improve your mindset. It means playing piano for an hour a day. If you play piano or, um, going out and fishing or, you know, playing some board games with your kids, something to recharge yourself for sure. I'm truly listening to everything you're saying. I'm I'm just taking it all in. Very and breathe, breathe very like wise. <laughs> breathe, breathe in and breathe out. <laughs> yeah, br breathing exercises are huge. If you find yourself getting overwhelmed, there's this uh, practice that uh, one of my best friends is a private mastery coach. He's an NLP certified hypnotherapist. The guy's incredible, and it's so it's if you take a deep breath in to your diaphragm, and at the top of the breath you hold it for two seconds. Like, and then at the bottom of the breath, you pause for two seconds. You do that as many times as you need to. Uh, I'll do it real quick. One, two. One, two. And the reason is, is when you control your breathing, you can disengage the sympathetic nervous system, which is tied to the amygdala that fires the fight or flight response. And you're disengaging the fight or flight response, literally controlling your body at a biological level because you're interrupting the breathing pattern. And when you take calm, re deep, relaxing breaths, kind of like why people who smoke cigarettes because they're changing their breathing, uh, so important to stay stable and connected. Uh, routines, proper sleep. Um, I won't be going to the gym. I got a gym membership this uh, winter and I've been going two to three times a week, which is like the best decision ever when you keep your body in motion. And uh, so now I'll be working out from home and we're taking our dogs for walks around the block and things like that. And to, to keep the routine is so important because I remember a time in, in my life that, I mean, you literally end up in the bedroom under the covers scrolling on your phone 
at, right. <laughs> like in a dark place. And yeah, it's true. So don't let yourself go to that place. Don't let yourself go to that place. Plug in. Have we were talked about buffaloes versus cows. Tell me. So the the buffalo, and this is all this is all real story. Cows, when they're out in the middle of the plains and they see a storm coming, they sense it. They feel it, and they run away from it. They just run, run from the storm. The storm eventually overtakes them, pelts them with wind, rain, hail, lightning. You know, it just freaks them out. They're in pain for longer because now they're running with the storm. Buffaloes turn and they charge the storm. They run headfirst into it. And they still experience some of the pain and suffering that comes along. It's a storm. You can't control it. It's, it's the weather. They still experience it, but they actually move through it way faster because they strategically move through it out to the other side. So, you know, we, we used to exemplify this a lot in our service business. We, it was actually one of our core values, you know, like be the Buffalo run towards the problems. And this is what we have to do right now. We have to run towards those problems. We have to identify that, you know, the, the best action that we can possibly take is proaction. You're going out there and actually addressing it head first. Um, you know, check out the supply chain, uh, figure out, you know, what that looks like, like be real strategic and get your team involved, sit down with your employees, you know, rather than just like laying everybody off, maybe you can, um, you know, ha have everyone take a one day off a week, you know, drop your schedule down to four days as instead of five days, like small so that everyone gets a little bit of an impact rather than just a few people taking the full brunt force of the impact. Um, but get your team involved to, to some solutions. You don't have to do this alone. You don't have to be alone in trying to figure this out. I like this. I already like what you said. I'm uh, creating a plan right now. I've gotten so reliant on uh, marketing, such as the voicemail bombs, the email broadcasts, and doing the voicemail bombs, amazing, by the way, and then uh, the postcards and sending customers brownies and doing the normal uh, modes of marketing and all the Google My Business that actually picking up the phone and calling customers. Uh, texting them, but calling them mm -hmm. and just you know, easing, or like you said, allaying their fears. Hey, we normally service your property. Let's get you on the schedule. And it, you were talking about some things that you could do, like, because I don't at all want to come across as me trying to profit off of this. That's not my intentions at all. I just want to serve my customers and run my business just so as everybody here. How, how, what are you talking about? Like crack a little joke, like, hey, elbow bump, or we won't if we come into the house, we're going to wear masks and rubber gloves and shoe covers to make sure. So you're safe. Like, yeah. So one of our, one of our conquerors, uh, Caleb Winninger, he, he created this epic killer video and he shared it with everyone inside of our conquer group. And uh, basically what it is, is he talks about, you know, Hey, one of our core missions is to make sure that, you know, you and you know, the world is a healthier, happier, cleaner place. And so because of that, these are the steps that we're taking to make sure that you're, you know, you're protected. And then he talks about, um, you know, the fact that his, his team is mostly window cleaners, you know, them keeping their hands clean all throughout the day. Um, it kind of happens on autopilot, but uh, towels that they use, they take their towels and they just, they um, don't reuse them from job to job. They put them into plastic bags and they, you know, launder them and clean and sanitize them on a daily basis. Um, every single day they go through all the hard surfaces in their offices and disinfect them. If someone shows up to work, they take their temperature of every single technician. And if someone exhibits a fever or something, they send them home. Like, you know, they, they and they had video of like, you know, getting the temperature taken. Uh, when they come into your home, we wear booties, we wear masks, we wear gloves, we dispose of these gloves. Like basically going through to just give the customer so much confidence that, wow, okay. I don't have to worry about someone just like showing up and just being a big coronavirus Petri dish <laughs> because these are the steps that you're doing and being proactive about it. Like do the video now and send it off. And when he sent it out to his customers, their customers were like totally appreciative because it allayed a bunch of their fears and concerns. And then they said, man, this is so great. I was thinking about canceling, but now that I see that you have this and you're you know, taking all these preventative steps, I feel very, very comfortable with you coming into my home. Dude, that's amazing. So, uh, we do landscaping and window cleaning. And I was thinking about that. What about all the customers that normally blow up our phones for uh, interior window cleaning this time of year? And so if you do interior cleaning services, sending out emails and calling the customers and putting on the website that at this time you'll be wearing 
clean yeah. booty shoe covers on every single job. All the tools will be disinfected and sprayed down. No towels will be reused. They'll be sealed away and uh, properly in the laundry and sanitized. Fresh, clean towels. Uh, what about you know, gloves and face masks? Is that a little? Yeah, the gloves, the gloves that are being used, they, he disposes of those on each job and like, you know, switches those up. Face masks are a real concern right now because there's like a nationwide shortage of them. But, you know, some, some of them there are, some of them there aren't. Um, you know, you like the surgical masked ones are a little bit more available, but the N95s aren't as much. Um, but, you know, put a plan in place and, and just be transparent with your customers as far as what you're doing. If interior services are a no-go, uh, you know, talk about some of the exterior services that you're doing. Um, you know, talk about, hey, we accept online payments, so we won't need to, you know, speak face to face to our customers. We have online bookings. We have, um, you know, these are the steps that we're doing to make sure that we still service your property and make it look beautiful, um, you know, without having to interact face to face to our customers. And we have, we'll send you pictures of, you know, whatever. Just think about what, what are your customers going to be concerned about and how can you fix it? One of our uh, maid service conquer companies, uh, they, they actually got a fogger and they're doing uh, a disinfecting fogging for free on every single customer's house that they're doing. They come in and they disinfect and fog like all the services in the entire house and like in the entire room, every single one of the rooms. And they're doing this for free. So now she like had an even bigger demand for customers wanting to get services done because I mean, shoot, yeah, come in and disinfect my whole entire house. And then you got the other germaphobes that are like, I don't even have it in my house, but come disinfect it anyways. So it's just opening up opportunity to serve people. And you know what? That's really, that's interesting that you said that. Put yourself in the mind of your customer. Um, I went grocery shopping just the day before yesterday, and the stores are pretty hit up and everything, but I got some things that we needed in. Um, so I come in the house with groceries and I set them down. I go, wait a second. I just walked on my floor, my kitchen floor with the same shoes that were in the grocery store. I took my shoes off and I like clean the floor and I switched to my, um, slippers. Uh, my slippers Get that I have for around the house. Slippers. <laughs> yeah. And, and, but, but my mind started going into the secondary order consequential thing of like, Oh my God, if it's on the dog, or the, like there, what I'm saying is that customers think like this if they're just yeah. people and people think of things like this. That's so true. allaying people's fears and, and, and showing uh, trust and that you are a careful, conscious, uh, you know, uh, sanitized um, crew or person that, that w will increase the likelihood and chances that they'll say yes and hire you. And that's really, really smart, dude. These are all ways to make money, man. Yeah. And I think that the important thing is, is that, um, you know, there's, there's a difference between taking advantage of a I don't mean it like that. I don't mean I know, taking I don't either. advantage. I don't either. And that's what I want to clarify for people is that there's a difference between taking advantage of crises and genuinely serving people. The side benefit of service is income, period. It always has been. You know, what, what do you think 3M is doing right now with their, with their uh, you know, profit line right now? Literally billions of masks that are being sold or millions upon millions upon millions. Um, there's companies right now that are raking in profits from this, not because they're taking advantage and they're price gouging and they're, you know, uh, fear mongering and using fear tactics and spreading that. That's where you start crossing into the line of, of doing that. But if you have a, a true value add service that people want and they need and you charge for that, there is zero things wrong with that. Now, if you make it to where, only certain types of people can get access to it because you, you price things so ridiculously high that that's up to your moral compass as to whether or not you're comfortable with it. But I think that um, providing value added services to people when they need it, when they want it um, is, is definitely a way that, that uh, you can continue to stay in business and, and, and serve, you know, thrive through this time period. Another positive note, just literally before we get on here, my phone rang and um we're about to turn on the calling center once we get really busy to take all the calls. But for now, I'm taking them in at Kelfus Professional Services. This is Keith. How can I help you? And a nice lady was on the other line and she wanted a quote for a project. And I, I paused real quick. I'm like, wait a second. Okay. How can I help you? What in, in, it was like an interesting thing. So just because you might be in a fearful mindset doesn't mean that everybody is. This is a, a great thing to stay, uh, have perception of. And so, yeah, man, 
Cool. What else do you want to add? Just listening to you talk, man. You're like the yogi. The Zen. <laughs> yogi. <laughs> well, I, um, I, I think I just want to leave everyone with, um, you know, don't, don't go into isolation. You know, if you want to, you're not the only one that's struggling with these types of things. And if you go in with the mindset of just serving others, whether it's your fellow window cleaner, fellow landscaper, fellow maid service business owner, someone, just know that your words matter. And when you're on Facebook and you're posting things, your tone, your negative versus positive outlook will affect other people. It just will. And, you know, serve others, serve others first. Um, same thing with your customers. If you focus on just how do we serve them, everything, everything's going to work out fine. It will. This is, this is a period of time. This is not a permanent situation. This is a temporary situation. We will be on the other side of this looking back, just like in 2008, we thought the world was ending or felt like that way, you know, during that time period. It's like, oh my gosh. But yet we survive it. We look back on it. We learn lessons from it. We're more prepared for the next time. So everything is going to work out in the end. It's just, how are you going to respond right now? Be proactive or crawl into a rock and just be terrified. So I encourage you, be proactive. Take the actions you need. Uh, two, two final things and we're going to wrap this up. The one is, um, I'll say that after. The first thing is, I'm thinking about the speeding locomotive train how they say if you put just like a, 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 I think it's like a penny on the tracks, like it can't. Yeah, like a one inch by one inch square uh, steel block. And you push it up against the wheel. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, dude. Why yeah. is that so important? <laughs> it's actually one of my favorite illustrations. If you take a, you could have a huge locomotive that at speed could be capable of destroying a cinder block wall like 50 feet long, just obliterating the whole thing at speed. But if you take a one inch by one inch steel cube and the locomotive stopped and you push it up against that wheel, it will never be able to actually get speed. It'll never overcome that one tiny little one inch by one inch steel block. You put it right there on the wheels, like because of the torque and how much energy it takes in order to get that thing into momentum, it won't do it. So these little tiny stumbling blocks that we can have, these little small things that are, is our mindset most of the time, prevents us from actually getting action and moving forward and getting into momentum. When you can get a momentum, you can be an unstoppable force. You have to allow yourself to get into momentum. Being in fear, uh, being paralyzed, being negative, none of these things will get you the momentum. You have to, uh, uh, you know, go forward with a with a with a clear a clear track, not have any garbage laying on it. So don't let that train stop. Don't let it stop, baby. Keep the pedal down. <laughs> Keep the pedal down. Yes. And the, the final thing I want to ask is you might not want to share this because I think at the Conquer Summit, I don't remember if it was one of the stories you told that this stay inside of this room, the story with the, <laughs> uh, the nursing center and how it happened. Okay. Can you tell that one? <laughs> yes or no? Are you talking about the hospital? Yeah, dude. <sighs> yeah I'll share it. I'll okay share. guys real quick i gotta set the the context for this. this is the last thing and we're wrapping this up and if you stay to this long uh in the comments below you got to put the word hustle because we're ready to hustle so he told the story at the conquer summit uh it's him there and joshua latimer and everybody else and it was like uh when you told this story, bro, my mouth was just dropped to the floor. I was like, oh my God, that's, that's my worst nightmare. How are you standing here right now? And the whole point of what you told is that you were, you're, you're up on stage and you're here today. Like you made it through that. You got guys listen to this. So this was uh, several years back and we landed this really big hospital job. I mean, this thing was like one of the biggest projects we've ever done. 60, it was like 60K plus. And it was this big, massive hospital, complete exterior soft washing. Um, we had to use some chemicals in certain areas because it had some, you know, mold and mildew and algae and stuff that was growing on the surfaces. So um, there's these huge vents that are up on the top of this building and these big, long louvers all the way across. And they're just covered in mold. It's really gross. So we knew that we had to go in and we had to like clean them and sanitize them, disinfect them, get rid of all that stuff. And we worked with the engineering department to make sure that they put the HVAC system into what they call ash mode. Ash mode is when they don't circulate air in. They don't draw air in. Important if you're spraying things with chemicals. So we did that. 
and met with engineering and everything. My team's up on, on the roof and they're, and they're cleaning it. And then as they're cleaning it, all of a sudden people start running out of the hospital like this. <laughs> and they're like coughing and they're gasping for air. And the guy, like the head of maintenance comes out. He's like, stop cleaning, stop cleaning, stop cleaning. We're like, oh my God, what's, what's going on? There was drawing bleach fumes into the hospital and it was pumping it directly into so for context you guys are soft washing the whole building and you, you got big yes. machines with power washers and spares and guys on wands spraying yes the this soapy bleach. okay mm -hmm. yeah and so they come running out bleach fumes are getting pumped directly into the maternity ward so all these pregnant women laboring women all this like they're they're inhaling bleach fumes, and it's strong it's not like it's not like oh yeah oh it smells a little bit bleachy no it's like like sucking all that air like right into it and so i was panicked we shut everything down we clean everything they're like you, you know you have to stop all of it you can't do any of it and so i thought well that's it my business is over the very next day uh, by the way, we, we go up, we like bring brownies to everyone. We like try to make peace with everyone. You know, it's still, everyone's giving us the death glare. Um, the next day, an employee who was not on the job the day before mistakenly goes and does the exact same thing all over again in a different part of the area without, you know, the proper clearance. And it just was literally a note issue. He just didn't read the notes right, went in, started on this part of the area. Um, this time it pumped it into the NICU the neonatal intensive care unit where all of the babies were on life support were. And that, I mean, I just was like, okay, well that was all clean has been fun. This has been a good run. Business is over. Oh my God. You <laughs> thought you were going to lose your whole business and end up literally in jail, dude. Oh man. Yeah. They, they wanted SDS sheets. I was like, well, this is, you know, I'm getting prepared for my deposition already. And I'm like, you know, making notes on what, what, what happened. Cause I, I know of, inevitably I'm going to be landed into a court, a lawsuit or something. And, um, by some amazing, incredible miracle or whatever you want to call it, nothing actually ended up coming of it. We, we didn't get sued miraculously. I have no idea how, <clears throat> But at that, at that point in time, I just, I was so convinced that everything was completely over. And it was some of the most anxious I've ever been in my entire life about anything. It was the worst gut-wrenching feeling ever. You were legit probably curled up on a ball, shaking, <laughs> crying, weren't you? I was, yeah. That, I cry a lot. Have you noticed a lot of my stories have me crying? Oh, dude, they're awesome. I'm a sensitive guy. Your employees pumped <laughs> bleach fumes into a hospital with newborn babies. In neonatal intensive care unit, newborn babies, the babies that are like hanging to a thread of life. And so they're on, you know, feeding tubes and, and oxygen, everything in there. Yeah, it was really bad. And was, all you were trying to do the whole time was do the right thing and serve your customers in this crazy yeah, they thing. Had, they had mold on the outside of these vents. So like we, we needed to clean them and this was part of the scope. It was all agreed to and everything, but oh, it was really bad. I thought for sure that it was over. But then, again, it's one of those situations to where, you know, your, your worst fears and the anxiety that you have is all about things that could happen. And I was 100% convinced that business was over and lost days of sleep and, you know, and just like lost so much mental energy, just being convinced that that was the case. And then it never ended up being the case. So if I would have known that nothing would have happened in advance, I wouldn't have been stressed out, but it, that's the whole part of anxiety. It's just living in the future and we really don't know. So you just have to be content in the moment and just do what you can and take problems as you, as you get them. Awesome, man. How can everybody find Brandon Vaughn? Dude, you have system Saturday. I've shared it before on Facebook. A lot of people watch it. Uh, have you gotten around to doing any of those? I know you got a lot of stuff going on, but you, get, you guys can go back and watch a bunch of them too. But what's, what's going on on your social media? Side. Yeah, um, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing a lot specifically. One of the biggest things that um, I would say is, you know, during this whole thing, we just want to kind of help and support people. So um, this coming week, we're actually going to have a completely free online, uh, no pitch, no upsell, no offer, just an online hangout for any home service business owner that wants to hop on with us. Um, it's going to be uh, this Wednesday, um, likely is when it's going to be but it's, it's going to be, we're going to have someone from the SBA on there. That's going to talk about, uh, you know, financial options, financial options for people who are experiencing a lot of uh, problems. We're going to have a PR person on, on how to position, P, you know, your, your uh, public relations side of it. 
um, a marketing person to help with marketing. We're going to have a couple uh, seven and eight figure service business on there, service business owners on there to just kind of have a panel on how they're doing uh, to handle this and the steps that they're taking in their bigger companies to like mitigate some of this stuff. Um, so if you want to come hang out with us, um, again, there's going to be no offer, but I'm going to also have that document that I'll give out to anyone that wants it. We just kind of want to serve the industry right now. Um, no strings attached. So if that sounds like something you'd want to join us on, um, maybe Keith will drop a link somewhere where they can sign up for that, get details on it. Sure. I'll put it below in the show notes. It'll be, uh, this will be on YouTube as well. Going to Keith Kelfus YouTube channel. It'll also be on my other channel, the window cleaning blueprint YouTube channel, and it'll be in the notes and I'll put up, uh, Brandon Vaughn community link. You'll, you'll know how you'll know how to spot it right away. <laughs> cool. Right on. Awesome. We got this. You're not oh, we alone. We got this. We We're got fired this. up. Yep. Cool. All right, everybody. That's Brandon Vaughn. And hey, uh, are you still doing the Conquer program? You just had one a few months ago. Is there another one coming up? Uh, yeah, it's an application process, but we um, anyone's welcome to join. We have people joining every single month into the program. We have 13 certified coaches, uh, agsconquer.com, agsconquer.com. That's cool. Uh, where people can learn more and apply. And then I heard the live event. This I was at the last, last one, but this most re one, recent one, I heard it was nuts. It was amazing, man. Yeah, it was really good. It was really good. Next year is going to be even better too. All right, awesome. Over and out. Thanks, Brandon. All right, see you guys. Later, guys.